Would you please welcome George Daniki to the stage? How wonderful hearing all those stories about one young George Daniki. Rosemary, thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm looking around the room trying to identify as many faces as I can. Uh, welcome to what we are calling Affinity's uh, Affinity Intercultural Foundation's Luncheon Series. Uh, I'm here for the very first time uh, following a very special request. I need to make this very plain. It came to me from my foundation cousin, Hi, Paula, and as Professor uh, Rosemary Johnston has mentioned in her welcome remarks, the Affinity Intercultural Foundation sued me and the Australian Intercultural Society of Melbourne are sister organisations. So I, I feel an extra empathy and a very special affinity, and that's probably why uh, Ahmed said to me, can you come and join us and do this particular luncheon? And I said, absolutely. Uh, I'm also a member of the advisory board of AIS in Melbourne. Yes, believe it or not, I'm still an ambassador at SBS. In fact, as I stand before you, I think I can say with a measure of confidence, I feel as, I've, as if I've never left SBS, such as the response I receive uh, almost daily from uh, people from all walks of life and from a number of people uh, here today. But in truth, it's been 27 years, a lifetime ago, and so much has changed. Looking around the room, I can tell you that our media has changed. When I started in television, there was no internet. No smartphones, and certainly no Al Jazeera English. Our aspirations have certainly changed, as has Sydney and the Australia that I was born into. And my father, by the way, is still alive. He's 87 this year. And uh, I remember he landed in a place called Melbourne, stationed here on the 23rd of December 1949. And he was thrilled when I was the anchor of SBS because he would sit at home, lift the phone off the hook, as you could in those days, and make sure that nobody interrupted him for the next hour. And he still hasn't forgiven me for leaving SBS. But let's get back to Affinity, and it's brief. And it's here to, as you heard from uh, Rosemary, to help promote pathways and to build stronger relationships within the broader Australian community. And it's also planning, I've got to tell you this, uh, and it's very keen to execute some very key initiatives to help us all grow closer. And again, as I look around, I'm delighted to see representatives from uh, many different organisations, from government departments, from the church, from the food industry, from education, the law, the media, business, and from community. We're well represented uh, with, re with people from the uh, New South Wales Police Force and the Australian Federal Police. And can I also acknowledge, if I may, uh, a list of VIPs. Uh, I'd like to welcome, and if you wouldn't mind holding your applause until the end, we have the member for Greenway, Michelle Rowland, from the Federal Government. We have the uh, President of the Sydney Turkish Chamber of Commerce, Mr Abdullah Aksu with us. Uh, Jim Longley, who's the Chief Executive of uh, Aging, Disability and Home Care from the Department of Family and Community Services in the New South Wales Government. Delighted to have Jim here. Uh, we also have with us, uh, I, I should say, the new chair of the Australian Multicultural Council, Dr. Uh, Seb Ostovsky. Uh, he also uh, has another role as the Director of Equity and Diversity at the University of Western Sydney. Looking through our VIP list, and it is an extensive one, we are delighted to also have with us and welcome from the New South Wales Police Deputy Commissioner, Catherine Byrne, we have uh, from UTS, uh, fellow uh, journalist, lecturer, uh, Helen Natsikopoulos, who certainly made a name for herself at SBS. We have the, the executive principal from Amity College, uh, Mr. Dennis Edlinger. And he's, he wants to change that, certainly, but it's not going to happen. He's going to have to stay with it. From, from SBS, I'm delighted to welcome a fellow Melbourneian. So I can feel like I can say that, but he's going to get away with it. The Director of Corporate Affairs, Peter Havil, and he is a Collingwood man, so we won't go any further. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge from the Australian Federal Police, Jeanette Boland, 
We have uh, Margaret Mackay, who's uh, from the uh, Association of Independent Schools. Uh, the Privacy Commissioner joins us, Dr. Elizabeth Kearns, the, from the Galaxy Foundation, Public Relations Manager, Murat Yannick. Uh, from Al Jazeera English, we have a reporter, Andrew Thomas. Good to have you with us, Andrew. Leading the way, brand new perspective. I'm delighted. We need diversity, we need more voices, we need more dialogue. From the Australian Rescue Organisation, also we have the President, Ahmed uh, Erdogan, and from the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies, the CEO, Vic Alhadev. Please put your hands together, make them very much feel at home. Uh, I should also mention uh, the chairperson of the Galaxy Foundation, Mehmet uh, Saal. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I apologise for missing you there earlier, Mehmet but uh, you play an important role and we're thrilled to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, um, to succeed in life, I found that without passion, purpose and invention, few things will actually get off the ground. Indeed, in every field of endeavor, whether it's business, media or sport, you need to have that special drive, that, that energy. And I think that they're also the values that have propelled our guest speaker in his career. I certainly look forward to his address, especially want to hear more about the business that he leads. And like all broadcasting platforms, he faces a host of new challenges and challengers. I don't know who Stan is, no idea. Like many of you, I want to know how his organisation now in its 40th year will not only continue to entertain us, but help us to better understand what is an increasingly complicated <coughs> world that we live in. I'm very keen to find out just how SBS will service the needs of all Australians, no matter their colour or religion. I'm sure we'll find out very soon, because today's topic for discussion is passion, purpose and innovation, navigating challenges and driving real change in organisations. Well, before I introduce him, let me give you a little background. Yes, he is the Chief Executive Officer and the Managing Director of SBS. But he's had 25 years experience in senior management and executive roles across technology, communications, and the media industries. He uh, graduated with a Bachelor of Business at Charles Sturt Uni, and armed with that degree, he started at IBM, where he held a number of positions over the next nine years across things like marketing, finance, and sales, including getting to work in a gorgeous part of the world in Tokyo and Japan. Very multicultural uh, city. From there, he joined and please don't blame me for any of your problems with broadband or telephony. He joined Optus Communications in its very early days and became the company's youngest director. And during that decade of service in Optus, he did to see the development of pay TV and telephony. Much, much, much to ask. Uh, and the launch of broadband in this country. That valuable experience helped him, I dare say, join the ABC as the executive director of corporate strategy and marketing, where he managed the corporation's strategic planning was involved in launching three key platforms. iView, which is terrific. ABC News 24, eh, not so much. And ABC 3 for children. I'm an SBS man. Want me to pump their tires up? Make this an ABC program, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and during his tenure, and it's been a short one because he's just starting to get comfortable. So I think it's about four years now. Listen to what he's done. He's managed to launch the National Indigenous Television Platform, long time coming, NITV, Australia's first free-to-air Indigenous television channel. Terrific. He refocused SBS2 because the millennials don't watch television. So his chore and his task to attract younger viewers. I want to have a program for you. Um, he also looked at expanding in-language programming across both analog and digital. He didn't stop there. He did something else which was equally important. He increased its commercial revenues. It's how you make things happen. You make money. In fact, under his leadership, SBS has embraced digital technologies and opportunities, especially with its catch-up service. They call it SBS On Demand. It's how we work these days. You want something, you demand and have it. And can I just tell you, it's now available on more platforms and devices than any other Australian broadcaster. 
I'm delighted to make him very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. He is the Managing Director of SBS, Michael O'Brien.